Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the USS Trugston. The 5th USS Trugston CGN-35 was a nuclear powered cruiser in the United States Navy. She was launched as a destroyer leader called a frigate at the time and later reclassified as a cruiser. She was named after Commodore Thomas Trungston. She was in service from May 1967 to September 1995. The USS Trungshin was a nuclear-powered single-engine guided missile cruiser based on a heavily modified version of the Belknap class. She was the only ship of her class. Trungshin was the third type of nuclear cruiser to operate in the United States Navy after USS Long Beach and USS Bainbridge and was powered by the same D2G reactors as Bainbridge. Trungshin was originally de designed as a nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser uh, leader. But in the 1975 cruiser realignment, she was reclassified as a nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser. Virtually identical to the Belk Belknap class of weapon systems, Trunkson was powered by two D2G reactors rather than her sister ship's four 1200 PSI boilers. This resulted in Trunkson being overall larger and greater across the beam, and a little bit deeper in its draft, with a displacement of almost 1200 more tons. The lessons learned on the Trunkson class were later adapted to the nu next nuclear classes, the California and Virginia classes of nuclear-powered cruisers. Trunkson was commissioned with a 5-inch slash 54 Mark 42 gun on the foredeck and a twin rail Mark 10 missile launcher on the quarterdeck for the RIM-2 Terrier missile. The Terrier, was, the terrier system was later upgraded to utilizing the RIM-67A standard missiles in place of the less reliable Terrier missile. The missile depot was located under the helicopter deck and could store 40 RIM-67 standard and 20 RUR-5 ASROC uh, missiles. Um, Tungsten initially used two single 3-inch uh, slash 50 caliber guns, however in uh, 1979 these were replaced with two harpoon missile launchers. The anti-submarine suite of Tungsten originally included an unmanned dash, but in 1971 the hangar was upgraded to Lamps Mark 1 and the CH-2 Sea Sprite helicopter. While Trunks was not upgraded in, via the NTU program, two Phalanx Sibuya's systems were installed and new electronics were installed during the overhaul and nuclear refueling in mid-1980s. The version we have here in front of us is basically how the ship would have retired. Um, this is done up in the 1980s configuration and um, has the sea whizzes and all that stuff, which was part of that later upgrade package. Um, the ship was, uh, as I mentioned, decommissioned on September 11th, 1995, and uh, basically was um, recycled and all that stuff in 1999. So, uh, you know, ship that uh, had some, you know, service time and served with the United States Navy for quite a considerable amount of time um, for most ships, almost about 30 years, which is pretty good for a... Uh, naval vessel, that's for sure. Uh, but pretty cool, kind of Cold War uh, nuclear cruiser, and uh, should be a fun build to add to your Cold War themed um, BAFTA build fleets. Uh, but before we go and jump in and take a look at it, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you are, do feel free to. Um, Check out my Patreon page, link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and play the small amount of channel every month and in doing so earn a viewer career request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I know my channel is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take a look at the USS Trunkson and uh, basically uh, cruise nuclear powered cruiser. Um, or guided nuclear cruiser, something along those signs. But yeah, awesome ship. Uh start off with me at the bow of the ship. Um Nothing too fancy, just some different instruments. We have our 5 inch gun here that has this kind of right, um, antenna mass up on top of it. Move a little bit further back, we have some missiles that are located here, as well as uh, the failing Sea Whiz systems located on both sides there in front of the bridge. Uh, the bridge back here, pretty low profile ship, has uh, these really large um, kind of um, mass here, radar and um, targeting systems and all that kind of stuff. We then have some uh, missile launchers here. Um, I'm, they might be. Anti-air missile launchers, I'm not 100% sure, but there are missile launchers right here. As we approach further back, we have, again, our second mass, all that stuff. This uh, deck area over here it has the hangar that would allow the deployment of um, its anti-submarine helicopter. And then further back, we have uh, the 
uh, missile system here, or this uh, double missile system on the back, uh, which uh, is basically its main anti-ship um, armament. So, uh, pretty cool little ship here, and should be a fun one again to add to your BAFTA build fleets, kind of cruise alongside here midway, or uh, some of our other, you know, Cold War um, type vessels or vessels that would serve with this air with this um, ship here. But yeah, should be a fun build. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer, we're going ahead and start with layer one. A quick few things to mention is if you're completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, the way I like to structure probably about the first four layers of this build is going to be half on, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the ship and then the right side, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side, flip it over to the left side. Just kind of helps speed up the tutorial in the very easy parts, such as building the hull. Once we get into the complicated areas with the superstructure and all that stuff, I will be switching back to doing um, basically both sides all together. Um, so yeah, this uh, note that the first four layers here are going to be half on half off with that though um, I also want to go ahead and mention that uh, To build this correctly in the water level You will, will want to make sure that layer one here is basically seen a block underneath the water level You can see this line of blue concrete representing our water level or water surface level and you can see this line of Or basically where our first layer here is going to sit So just make sure that, that sits properly um, very important to make sure that is correct because obviously if it's not It's not going to sit properly when you um, add this to uh, the water. So just make sure it's positioned here when we get started. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get started. We're going to start off by placing down a brick up sound stair, two red concrete blocks. If you're on Java, we'll go ahead and place down two pistons like so. If you're on a different version, such as Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend placing down a brick up sound stair and then a brick top slab like so. However, for us on Java, we're going to place down two pistons here on the bottom and we'll get back to those a little bit later. After those two pistons, or um, basically those two blocks there, we're going to place down a row of brick top slabs that's going to go back a total of 23. So just like that, 23 going back. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition and did the slab here, it would be 24 after this brick stair. But yeah, we have 23 brick top slabs back like so. Then going up to the front here on the sides of the red stained glass panes, we're going to place down, or red stained glass blocks, we're going to place down two glass panes, and then one also on the side of this uh, piston here, or that brick up sound stair, whichever you chose to put. After this, we're going to go to the back here. We're going to count back one, or count forward from the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and our seventh brick top slab. We're going to place down a acacia wood trap over the side. And we're going to then build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine acacia wood trap doors forward from that. So basically, with that all done, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number one. Take a look at it from above. This is what you should have for the top down view. Pretty straightforward stuff so far, nothing too complex. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to get started with, we're going to place down a red stained glass pane on top of this brick up sound stair. And then going back from this, we're going to place down a row of red concrete. That's going to go back a total of 27, and then on top of that brick top slab there on the back. Just like that. After we have that all done, we want to go and then go to the end of that row of red concrete. We're going to place down a brick up sound stair, two brick top slabs, and then three acacia wood trap doors coming off this slab like that. Going back up to the front, we're going to go and count back one, two, three, our fourth red concrete block. We're going to place down two red stained glass panes to the side here, then a row of three of brick walls, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen red concrete blocks back, two brick up sound stairs, a acacia wood fence gate followed by two end rods, another acacia wood fence gate, and then a birch wood slab coming off that fence gate, like so, another acacia wood trap door, and then two brick walls back like that. After we have that all complete there, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab some acacia wood signs. We're going to go to our fourth red concrete block from the front. We're going to place down an acacia wood sign, followed by one, two, three, four, five, and six. Acacia wood um, signs back from that. So um, again, you have a total of seven here on the side, just like that. And after that's all done right there, that is going to basically conclude what we have here for this layer. Take a look at it from the top down view. This we should have a layer one complete, or sorry, layer number two complete. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to get started with here, we're going to place down the inside wall on top of this uh, red stained glass pane like so, and an error inside wall right behind that. We then want to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of stone blocks that in total is going to go back a total of 27 blocks, and it's going to end right on top of this stone, or this brick up sound stair. We then want to place down four gray wool blocks back, and then another stone block here on the end. 
After that, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a like race stingless paint, come off this second block here, and then one, two uh, stingless paints back from it, then two inside walls, and then taking our stone full blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six stone blocks back. We're going to go then place down a virtual button on the last stone block here. And then two iron bars going forward from it, just like so. With that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number three. And again, here's an aerial overview of what that will look like. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. Before we go ahead and move on to layer four, one thing I want to go ahead and throw onto the build real quick is uh, basically those pistons down there. I did forget to touch those when we went to, uh, or we got done with layer number two. But basically, if you're on Java and you have those pistons that are placed on the bottom of the ship right there near the bow, we're going to go ahead and do our do a slash give command so slash give space at p and we're going to go and type in minecraft colon debug stick and it should be able to autofill press tab and it should fill in the command like so so we have this command right here slash give space at p space minecraft colon debug underscore stick uh, press enter and it should give us this glowing stick. We can then go to up to these pistons and just very simply right click and it will get rid of that bottom layer to them and it helps kind of create that better flow there for the front there. Very minor little detail there but just again kind of helps contribute to the whole of the ship and especially if you have this thing displayed out of water it's going to definitely help that shaping a little bit better. Anyways though let's go ahead and move on to layer 4 um, of the build. Moving into our next layer we have layer number 4. Layer 4 here will uh, basically be a hybrid layer. We're going to be doing mainly the, this whole portion here half on half off. And this little back details this details we get into with the missile launcher and all that will be done um, basically all together there on the back. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to place down an inside wall on top of this one here. And then a light grease stainless paint coming off of it. We're going to place down a smooth quartz block behind that uh, wall there. And then three stone blocks. After those stone blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of gray uh wool back so this right here is gonna be a row 23 and then a stone block there on the end of that row going back up to the front we're going to go to this first stone block here we're going to place down three light gray stainless panes along the side here two andesite walls then two stone full blocks we're going to go and then place down a stone stair like so then one two three stairs after it so you have three normal stairs that stair a corner stair and then taking dark oak signs we're just going to place down dark oak signs on the sides there or i should say the fronts of these stairs like so we're going to go then place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 stone blocks back. And then on the last four, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, and 4 iron trap doors there along the sides for the netting that's on the sides there of that landing pad there for our helicopter. After we get to this point, we're going to now switch to basically um, doing this whole layer together. So then right here would be a good point to copy what we did on the right side over to the left side as we basically do this whole back section, both sides all together. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video here and go ahead and replicate the right side over to the left side. So going ahead and now moving to the back, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a anvil. That'll be in the center or come on that center block right there. And then to the sides of that anvil, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides. And then coming off of that, we want to place down an end rod. However, to place this end rod, we're going to place down a block here. That kind of leaves a space between this fence gate and the block. We're going to place down an end rod coming off the side of the block there. So we have the bottom of the end rod facing out like so. With that done, we want to go and then uh, grab ourselves some item frames. And if you're on Java, we can go ahead and do a cool feature here by going ahead and placing down a item frame uh, underneath these end rods, just like this. And then we can place down a gray stained west pane in those item frames or underneath those um, end rods, like so. At this point, we're going to then take our gray carpet. We're going to place down two gray carpets like that to the sides here. We're going to place down an item frame on this stone block here to the side, and we're going to then place down a stone block in the item frame. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and also place a stone button on this block as well. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you would not be able to place a stone button and item frame in the same block space. So if that's the case, just go ahead and place the item frame and disregard the stone button. After this, though, we want to go ahead and take our end rods. We're going to place down two end rods up on these remaining two stone blocks like so. And with that all complete there, that's going to wrap up what we have there for the back. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number five. And we'll be doing this layer all together. So with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with here on top of this glass pane, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate. And we're going to open the fence gate up toward the front. We then want to take dark oak wood signs and around these three sides here of the fence gate, we're going to go ahead and wrap signs around like so. We then want to place down a um, block that's going to go 
or basically a pillar of two blocks up from that um, fence gate, delete this first block here and then place down an end rod on the bottom of that block and delete that block and that right there is going to create our front. We're going to go ahead and place down two daylight detectors back, make sure we turn these to night mode and do make sure to fix that trap door if it, or sorry, that fence gate if it does open. After that we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall and on top of that we'll place down a cobweb just so we don't have to worry about it later. After this we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater with a notch just spread apart like so and then a iron trap door directly after that. At this point here we get to our gun and now our gun here is a little bit um, complex for uh, basically depending on what version you're on. If you're on a bedrock or pocket or bedrock, yeah, bedrock or pocket edition, I would recommend probably placing a stair here and then an end rod coming off that stair like so. And that's probably all you're really going to be able to do. You can kind of spruce up the stair here by placing down some dark oakwood signs here to the sides, but that's really all you're going to be able to really do for that 5 inch gun. Now if you're on Java, however, we can go ahead and grab ourselves a stone brick wall and we'll be placing down a stone brick wall in this place right here. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves our debug stick again, so using that same command. And by using our debug stick, we can go ahead and change the directions and the facing of it. So we'll have our south side here that's going to be low, so it's going to be south low. And obviously your directions may be different depending on like what way your ship is oriented. So just keep that in mind, um, you know, my directions might be a little bit different. Uh, basically the side facing toward the front we want lowered and then the side facing toward the back we want to be tall. So it should look like this here and that right there is going to basically do our 5 inch gun. That's the best design um, for us on Java with basically being able to use that ability of the debug stick. In addition we'll place down a block here to both sides. Again this is going to be a Java only feature. We'll place down a case with a button coming off those sides of those blocks there. And we'll go ahead and then use our debug stick here to go ahead and change the face by uh, holding shift and right clicking we'll have it set to the floor so like so and then we can also change the direction so we'll left click to selected facing and we'll go ahead and change it so it faces this direction here on both sides so just like that our wall did get a little messed up so just make sure that um, we fix our wall here so we want to make sure that it's going up and north here we want to make sure it's tall and we're also going to place down a cage with a button here and we'll need to alter this again so it's tall so there you go just like that after that's all done though uh, we're gonna go ahead and place down a, a gray carpet to both sides here just like so and we're gonna go then place down a andesite wall on this block and then to the sides of that andesite block we're gonna place down a light gray stainless pane again for Java we can go and use our debug stick here to actually extend the glass panes out to the sides here uh, like so and just to kind of help reinforce that shielding wall that goes across there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair like this to the sides. And then coming off those stone brick stairs, we're going to place down a chain. Like so. And we're also going to place down a skeleton skull on top of those stone brick uh, stairs. So just like that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row 2. 1, 2. Daylight detectors. Turn those to night mode. And then we're going to take stone brick slabs and place down one on both sides of this daylight detector here. And then a row 3 across. We then want to place down dark oakwood signs on the sides of these two stone brick slabs on both sides like this. After that's all done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, stone block in the center here. Or sorry, two stone blocks in the center. And then we're going to place down two stone brick ups downstairs. Like this going across. And then dark oakwood signs on the side there of those stairs. Like so. After that, we're going to then place down a narrow stone block in the center here. A narrow uh, dark oak fence gate to both sides and we're going to then place down again one two and three stone blocks this time with three andesite walls to the sides here like so we're going to go to our first walls here we're going to place down item frames on both sides and in those item frames we want to go and place down some white beds like so which will be rotated and facing toward the front or just rotate on its side doesn't really matter there so just like that on both sides there after we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down a stone, or rather a, uh, yeah, a stone block here in the center. And we're going to then place down a stone upside down stair to both sides of that uh, stone block. We're going to place down a narrow stone block in the center here. This one is going to be followed up with a andesite wall to both sides. We're going to place down a, again, a narrow stone block in the center. This one here is going to have a light gray stainless paint to both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and place down two more stone blocks as well as a white bed to both sides like so and then a stone block here right here after that in the middle and then a light gray stainless paint to both sides 
We're going to then place down a polished anisite block there in the center. A ladder coming off that polished anisite block like so. And then an anisite wall to both sides of that block like that. Now in the back here for our uh, deck, what we're going to do is we're going to place down a gray carpet on both sides here. A row of three of white. A white uh, carpet on both sides. Gray carpet in the center. And then we're going to place down one and two end rods here on the left side. And then uh, two white carpets over there to the right side. So just like that for that landing pad there. And then lastly for this gun in the back, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this anvil. Turn it to night mode. And then we're going to follow this up with a skeleton skull on top of these fence gates like so. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number uh, layer number 5 of the build. And uh, here's an overview of what it should look like from a top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 6. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go on top of this stone brick wall. We're going to place down a fence gate. And we want to go ahead and then have this open up toward the back. Again, uh, your wall may act a little weird, so just make sure that you adjust it. So we want to make sure that that is up there and that side is raised up as well so uh, just make sure that is uh, you know still the right uh, right look there we're going to place down a second fence gate on top of it and then a end rod or sorry an iron bar on top of this like that after that we're going to then go to the top here of this iron trap or this uh, light gray stainless paint on the right side we're going to place down three iron bars up like so after that uh, we then want to go ahead and go to this section we're going to place down a stone block there in the center followed by a andesite wall to both sides we're going to go then grab ourselves some item frames. And we're going to go place down a item frame across the, or item frames across the front. We're going to place down a black bed and the ones to the sides rotated so the pillow is facing toward the front or toward the middle. And then in the middle here, we're just going to place down a black concrete block like so. And that'll basically be our um, bridge there for the ship. We're going to go then place down a stone block here and then a stone slab to both sides of the stone block as well as a dark oak sign on the side of this stone slab. Once we have that done, we're going to place down a dark oak fence gate off this slab like so, open toward the back. Same thing over here. And then another stone block in the center. We're going to then place down two more stone blocks down the center and two andesite walls to both sides like so. On the back here, we're going to place down a row or a row of three of gray carpet across this section here. We're going to place down a gray carpet in the center and then a grindstone like this to both sides. And then a gray carpet to both sides on top of those walls there. And then in the space in between them, a redstone repeater with a notch spread apart like so. We then want to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 stone blocks back. 1, 2, 3, and 4 light gray stainless panes along the first four blocks. Same thing over here. And then a inside wall here on the very end, just like that. After that is all done, uh, that right there is going to basically conclude what we have uh, for that set section there. And with that, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number six. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and move into layer number seven. All right, guys, moving into layer number seven. For layer seven to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place a stone block on top of this one right here. And we then want to take gray carpet, and we're going to place down a gray carpet to both sides of that stone block, and then a row of three across the front here like so. We're also going to place down a iron bar coming off the side here of this carpet. So like that to both sides. And then we're going to place down another iron bar that comes off this going up and forward at an angle like so for this antenna. After that we want to go then place down a uh, stone block here and after, we're going to go then place down a stone top slab to both sides and then we're going to place down another two stone blocks back like that followed by a gray carpet on both sides on top of those walls. Once we have uh, that all done uh, we want to go and grab ourselves some barrier blocks. We're going to place down a barrier block that's going to be located in this section just like this. So we'll wait for those to disappear and it should look like that and then on the Sides here, the barrier blocks facing toward the front. We're gonna place down some stone buttons like so. After that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a dark oak wood fence gate on top of this stone block. Open it toward the front, and then a fence gate here, open toward the back. We're gonna place down a barrier block, which will be kind of coming off these fence gates here, forward and out to the sides here. So just like that in this section, and we're gonna then place down a stone button there on the sides like so. After that, we want to go and then place down a um, skeleton skull on top of these two glass panes like so and then in the middle here we're going to place down a gray carpet we're going to then place down the inside wall right here and then a grindstone on top of this stone block just like that and once we have that all complete there that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number seven at this point we're going to be going ahead and moving into our final layers of our build which will basically just involve building up the mass here for the um, ship so with that let's go ahead and move into our last final layers all right guys so moving into our final layers here we have layers eight through fourteen 
for these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with by placing down a stone brick stair on top of this stone block. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and a light gray bed. We're going to place down an item frame, come off this stair, and a light gray bed in the item frame like so. If you're on Java, we can place a dark oakwood sign there on the front there of the stair. On top of the stair, we're going to go ahead and also place down an oakwood trap door and open it up like so. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and use the technique with our debug stick here by going ahead and placing a block uh, with a space of one off to the sides there of the stair. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves a trip bar hook and then grab our glowy stick. And we're going to go ahead and place down our trip bar hooks here on the side of those blocks. And then we're going to go ahead and select it to selected facing and we're going to go ahead and rotate this so it connects up to the sides there of the stair. And that right there will basically uh, create that little um, fun kind of um, fire control or some, some kind of a radar system or something like that. We're going to go then place down a skeleton skull on top of these two stone blocks and then a light gray carpet or sorry dark gray carpet right behind that. We're going to then place down a dark oak fence gate here on these two blocks. First one here is going to be open to up toward the front, back one here open toward the rear. We're going to go ahead and go up from these fence gates with another fence gate on top of these two. Same orientation open toward the front and open toward the back. This row right here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, coming off this fence gate on the back here. We then want to place down a end rod, coming off the sides here of this skeleton skull. And below that end rod, we're going to place down a barrier block on both sides, followed by stone buttons wrapped around the sides there of these barrier blocks like that. After that, going ahead and continue to work our way up uh, behind this trap door, we're going to place down a barrier block here, stone button on both sides, and we're going to then place down a uh, barrier block that goes up from that one and then one out to the sides. We're going to place down a stone button on the sides here of the barrier blocks like that that go up like so. We then want to place down a dark oak wood fence gate on top of this one right here and this one will be opened up toward the front as well. And then a fence gate on top of this one. Uh, this one will be opened up toward the front as well so it should have a little bit of an uh, angle there. And then on the sides of this fence gate we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate like so. After that, our next uh, row up, we're going to place down a fence gate on top of this one here, open it toward the front, and an air fence gate on top of this one, again, open up toward the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick top slab, and then a end rod coming off both sides of the stone brick top slab, like so. After that, we're going to then place down one, two, and three end rods going up on top of that uh, trap door there, or on top of that fence gate, then a andesite wall on top of that uh, fence gate there, with a row of three of iron bars on top of the wall like so. We then want to place down a wither skeleton skull on top of this stone brick top slab and then a end rod or an iron bar rather on top of those iron end rods like so. And that right there is going to do it for your front mass. Um, on the back here also uh, if you're on Java we can go ahead and add the extra bit of uh, detail here on the back which is very simply going to be going ahead and going off of this fence gate and end rod. Uh, basically going off a block, have a block of space between those. We'll grab ourselves levers and our debug stick here. We're going to go ahead and place down two levers here. And we're going to go ahead and rotate these. So this one's going to rotate so it connects up to this fence gate. And this one here we want to activate it. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate it. And this one here is going to be coming off that end rod there. So just like that. And a little trick there on the debug stick to add a little bit more detail to that mast. Now for this back section here we're going to place down a fence gate on top of this one here as well. And then one on top of this one. And these will be opened up toward both sides like so. After that, we're going to place down an air fence gate up. Again, opened out, opened up to the sides there. We're going to place down a skeleton skull here coming off that um, fence gate. And then a end rod to both sides, so like we did for the previous mast. Uh, below the end rods, we're going to place down an air barrier block that goes up. And again, stone buttons wrapped around on the sides here. Those two sides of the barrier block like so. After we have that done, we're going to then uh, place down another fence gate up, like so. This will be opened up toward the back, and then this fence gate here on top of this one also opened up toward the back. And then another fence gate on top of these two, so both of these again opened up toward the rear of the ship. At this point, we're going to place down a fence gate on the side of this one here, to both sides. And we then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick top slab, coming off this fence gate here on the back, and then a fence gate on both sides of that top slab there. Uh, going ahead and go on top of this fence gate, we're going to place down two end rods, one, two, and then a skeleton skull, that'll be on top, like so. Then coming off the uh, skeleton skull there, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron bar, 
And if you're on Java, we can do the same thing we did kind of down there um, in this section right here by placing down a lever here. And we can go ahead and then use our debug stick to rotate it. So just like that. After we have that done, we're going to then place down a narrow brick wall, or fence post, rather, on top of that stone brick top slab, a row of three iron bars across the front there, or on, across the top there of it, and then a wither skeleton skull come off the center uh, iron bar like that. After we have that done, we're going to go and then take our barrier blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block here, come off this fence gate. Then we want to go ahead and place down a second one on top of that, and then a uh, barrier block that's going to be coming off of the bottom here of these two fence gates, like so. After we have that done, we're going to take our stone buns and place on a stone bun on both sides of this barrier block here. Um, and actually, we're, we're going to go ahead and also place down a barrier block out to the sides, like so. We're going to then place down a stone bun here on these side, on the sides here of these barrier blocks, and then around these two sides for the top ones, like that for that cabling. And the last thing we need to do here is to go ahead and grab a grindstone and just place it down on top of this andesite wall, like so, for the back there. And once we have that all complete there, that's going to wrap up uh, layers 8 through 14. And with that, that will complete my design here for the USS Truxton uh, CGN 35. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use if you do not use this. But I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This being the thing from a sound of the build, tweak to my channel, or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on over on Enjoy the Build. Have fun with it and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is uh, always in my video descriptions. Uh, but with that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.